for him. God rested on the seventh day. So when he rested, everything that we walk in now is already finished. But we have to trust him in that. If you're with me here, say amen. amen. So what I want to really talk to you about trusting God, resting in God, really understanding what it means to trust God. Because many of us in here, we say we live in the rest of Jesus, but we don't. Because when I trust God, whatever God said, I don't care how I feel or what you say, whatever he has said to me, I know it's a finished work. Yes. You see this new covenant right here, morning, this Bible? The church needs to take it a little bit more seriously. Yes. We need to take it and go ahead and find life for you and stop trying to find death for you. Because this Bible, this new covenant, is God's final decision on everything to deal with you. I'm going to say it again. This new covenant, I don't care what kind of church you go to, what government, what preacher, message to preach again. You need to understand that from Matthew all the way to Revelation, God's already finished saying what he's going to say. And you've got to make your decision. If God said it, that's what I want to stand on. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I, I think I'm in the wrong church. You have to understand that God's work's already finished. He rested. When he rested, you and I are a manifestation of his rest. Jesus himself was a manifestation of the rest of God. So when we come in Christ, we by my house, we should enter the rest of God for the word of God. Because we now begin to live by the word. You may never, never be able to rest in the person you're living with, but you can rest in God. What God says is final for them. Which means that when God said, I don't, I don't ask him about it anymore. For those of you who lead houses, who have children, who in a relationship, how do you feel when you tell somebody something and they ask you to prove it? Wow. How do you feel if you say, baby, I'm going to buy you a watch tomorrow. And 12 o'clock that night they ask you, you still don't buy me the watch? I don't, am I in the right church here? How do you feel when you promise somebody something, promise your children something, and you love them, you know you want to give it to them, and they come and ask you in, in a way, are you, Mom, are you still going to take me to McDonald's? Your first response is what? Don't you trust me? Yeah. I'm preaching real good, you know. I'm not gonna be up here. Your first response is going to be, but don't you trust me? Don't you trust what I said? If I said, don't you trust, Joni, don't you trust me? If I told him I'm buying the shoes, don't you trust me to buy it? Even if I couldn't buy it this week, don't you trust me? Sometimes it don't come when you want it. So God is asking the church, don't you trust me? Who oh, is really quiet now. To trust God, we must first rest in his finished work. When Jesus said it's finished, we should believe that. How many of you believe that? If you believe that, then why are you guilty? If you believe that, why are you under condemnation? If you believe that, then why are you angry? When Jesus said it is finished, I've done the work, I've forgiven sin, I've fulfilled the law, I've removed the debt of sin, I've given access to everybody to come in boldly. Why don't you believe that? Why do you believe you got qualified to come in? Why believe you gotta have a certain prayer life, a certain lifestyle, or have a certain dress, or go to a certain church? Why don't you believe that when Jesus gave you access, you can go into God whatever you, no matter how drunk you are, no matter if you just left the motel sick, you can still go. But why, why don't you believe that though? Mm. Because the church doesn't doctor you with something that, that, that makes you believe that you gotta qualify for what God's already gave you. When God said He forgave your sins, why don't believe that? Why do you still allow people to condemn you about sin? I must say it again. I'm going to say it tomorrow night when I go to New York. I'm going to say it tomorrow when I preach in New York. Listen, any preacher who stands before you talk about sin, God didn't send them. Amen. I don't care what nobody tells you because the Bible tells me that God says, My sins and iniquities will you remember no more? I choose to believe that. So if you come talking to me about sin, God didn't send you. You're on your own agenda. Am I in the right church here? So anytime somebody gonna tell you, you sin, it's a, it's a, it's a condemnation, it's a, it's a reproach. No, 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 ain't no reproach for me because you, you deal with sin, God, not. And since I serve the living God, please permit me to live my life. I don't care how the feeling you always choose to be right now, because life ain't going your way, I'm going to live in victory. Amen. I'm not, not going to tell you the truth. I ain't, I ain't feeling you. I ain't feeling you at all. I'm going to live in the rest of God. Amen. We have to trust the integrity of God. See, my wife don't always trust my integrity because I've lied to her too much over the years. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, I know that don't happen at your house. I know you told the truth all the days of your life, but amen, I, I lie every now and then. Oh, Jesus. So she don't always... <laughs> if you want to go someplace where the preacher can make you think he's perfect, that's the wrong church. Because you lie too. And you just lie today. Well, bless the Lord. You know it. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to bring the income tax. 
Well, that's why on that phone in your child's name who's six months old, you're lying. So we have to learn how to trust in the integrity of God.